The United States is a young nation, but our biggest and best are showing their age, often facing abandonment and tragically, demolition. You know, back in the 1920s, these places were the only, uh, the only area someone could go to get news. So they would go to the theater and see a newsreel and find out what was going on in the world before they were entertained with organ music and then a film. Are these American treasures worth saving? There would be a huge loss, not only in the sense of history, but with culture as well. I mean, we don't, we can't rebuild these places. Dynamic computer graphics, experts, and owners of these historic buildings weigh in to determine the cost of history and find out what is saving worth. Uh, my father bought the building in 1986, and he saw this, this you know, abandoned beauty there, and he, he didn't really know what to do with it and nobody really knew what to do with it. The banks were kind of hesitant with letting anybody touch it because it was such a risk. If you want to be creative with, um, with funding sources, I, th I, think, I think you can find ways to save these buildings. Uh, he went to the bank and said, you know, it's okay. I'm not gonna I'll reopen it as a movie theater. I'll just use the space as uh, public storage and people can just store their things much like a public storage. And they said, yeah, okay, fine, we'll give you the money for that. And he was surprised at that prospect. He restored the whole place, took him about a year, year and a half, and then reopened it as a theater. And uh, it was pretty prosperous when he first opened. And in the case of the patio, you have this atmospheric ceiling with moving stars and clouds. And, uh, and it's really a special place, and it still is today. The grandeur of the patio theater is a thing of the past, as well as all the movie palaces of the 1920s and, and onward. It's also just a style that one would be very unlikely to go and replicate today. Um, and that's why it's so important to preserve what we have. 150000 in operating costs, heating bills over $4,000 a month, entertainment taxes rising each year, it begs the question, is this $4 million one-screen movie palace sustainable? Chicago theaters, just like theaters all over the United States, have many suffered the same fate. Demolition by neglect, just like Detroit. Uh, so many places in Detroit, beautiful theaters in Detroit, have just been neglected for so many years that they've fallen apart. Detroit really brings to light the cost of history and what is saving worth. By 2000, Dimitri's father couldn't keep the patio open against years of mounting costs, and it remained shuttered until Dimitri couldn't find work and was willing to take an even higher risk in 2011. Unfortunately, my father passed away in October of that year, which really made it hard for me just because I'm 24 years old and I can't really depend on anybody else giving me such expert advice in my father since he ran it for 14 years. Seeing the theater grow uh, without him has been hard, but it's, it's helped me um, really push the fact that I want to keep the place open. Switching from old to new digital projection has breathed life into this iconic movie palace. But if the people don't fill the seats and Dimitri doesn't find an angel investor, the building could be one step closer to descent and lost to abandonment. I think one of the best examples of a sad story about a theater being lost in Chicago would have to be the Paradise Theater. Uh, it was a beautiful, grand uh, movie palace that was designed by John Eberson, and it sadly only lasted about 28 years. The theater didn't actually go very quietly. Uh, the contractor that was hired to tear down the building, it took him two years longer than he anticipated and actually bankrupted the entire company because it was built so strongly that they couldn't tear it down. Almost ironclad, these historic structures can cost more to tear down and rebuild than simply to abandon. If the shell is compromised, it's only a matter of time before Mother Nature takes over, destroying irreplaceable antiques never to be made again. What we find in rehab is it's, it's usually less expensive to rehab a building than to build new. You're, you're renovating a building with less construction costs and you're getting a better product. People pay the same amount for an older building than a new building, but they're getting so much more in the end. There's many options with older buildings to renovate them, reuse them for new uses, creative uses, and basically to think about these buildings as places that still are viable for decades and generations to come. 
The Cost of History.